I think most people, uh, most fishermen, have a copy of this gem somewhere on their bookshelf. It's, it's, it's the quintessential book for fishermen. Uh, McLean's Standard Encyclopedia. I believe it came out in the 1960s. This edition uh, was from the 1990s. Now, McLean himself was a rather prolific uh, fishing writer. Uh, and in, in 1967, he wrote an essay called uh, The Song of the Angler. And in this, McLean attempts to answer an age-old question about what becomes an angler or why one becomes an angler. He asks, what are the rewards of angling? A dead fish, a trophy? At some point, perhaps, but then it takes years to become an angler. Now, what McLean is talking about there was a certain evolution of sorts uh, for a sportsman, for an angler, and what we go through. What McLean called the title marks in our development as sportsmen. Now, in that song of the angler by McLean, he writes, in the beginning, when one is very young and inexperienced, fish are measured in quantity. Then only quality becomes important. Eventually, even record fish lose their significance unless they are of a particular species, and ultimately the size doesn't matter provided they are difficult to catch. I know, what's your point, Hutchinson? Well, it's this week's headline fish out of LBI on Friday night when my phone was ringing and buzzing like mad as I was enjoying a little bit of quiet time Friday evening on the back porch. It was the scene, the, the image, the post at Fisherman's Headquarters in Ship Bottom that broke the internet. A 40 pound plus tarpon taken by a hardcore 20 year old spear fisherman along the jetty rocks at Barnegat Light. First, let's get this out of the way. Yes, we get tarpon at the Jersey Shore. Um, in fact, before the state of, um, of New Jersey retired the category for this species, the state record was 53 pounds taken by Jim Klazakowicz off Seabright back in 1982. That was on rod and reel. An angler to register that tarpon as a, rec uh, as a record fish, you would think he would have had to kill the tarpon. So here in New Jersey, Tarpon is allowed to be harvested. It's not regulated by a fishery management plan. There's no regulation in the state of New Jersey. Florida has their own rules for uh, killing tarpon. They allow it, but you need a bonus tag or some type of permit. Louisiana, they spearfish for tarpon. They do the same thing in South Carolina. You can spear them in New Jersey. You can catch them on rod, rod and reel in New Jersey. You can keep them if you catch them. So there's no regulation against it. You can legally harvest this holy grail of Floridian game fish. Now, thinking back to what McLean said, title marks in our development. Rather than blindly joining the judge and jury on social media, I figured I'd go track down the young fisherman who caught that fish, who speared that fish. So I met up with 20-year-old Jake Klein at Vans Boats in Barnegat this week. He was cleaning up a few tuna after a quick hitter about 20 miles out on Wednesday. Jake saw tarpon on Thursday when he dove at the South Jetty. No one on shore believed him, which is why he was back there again with friends on Friday. My buddy Shane, who probably believed me the least out of everybody, said, made a drop, first drop of the day, came up screaming, I just saw six tarpon, Jake wasn't lying told you bro I go down I see two more I didn't get a shot so I, I didn't have a clear shot I didn't want to you know rip another one off risk all that um, then I come up breathe up make a drop four more come come right into me take a nice shot behind the gill plate of this one um, this was this, now we're in about 20 feet of water we're more out towards the end of the inlet so I'm struggling to get it to the surface um, as soon as I get up, I'm screaming for a backup shot, backup shot, backup shot. My buddy Shane comes, he gives me a backup shot. Max comes as well. We all grab the fish together. We put it in, the, we put it in, a, in a fish bag, tuna bag, ice it down. We drove it to fish heads, got it weighed, went back in the ice bag, came here. Um, we were a little excited, so we didn't do anything with the fish that night. But the next morning, I cut it up, put some meat in the smoker, smoked it up, and it didn't, it didn't come out terrible. It didn't come out great, but we ate it, you know, and it, it was, I had to eat. I had to give it a shot, you know. It was not, I didn't want to waste the whole fish, so. Title marks in our development. Now, in my 20s, had I, had I encountered a big tarpon in New Jersey, would I have killed it? I don't know. Would you? My 20s are way back in the rear view mirror at this point, and I'm smart enough not to weigh in on the subjective versus sub, uh, objective definitions. That's uh, of legal, what's legally allowed, and what's mm, personally acceptable to people. But just to be clear, 
you are allowed legally to harvest a tarpon in the state of New Jersey. And of course, Jake and his friends, as we've learned, ate the fish. These were the two biggest concerns over the weekend with a lot of people. So is this a little bit of a, I don't know, cancel culture at work in our recreational fishing community? At the risk of getting canceled myself, I just don't always understand where all the hate on social media comes from. I know it's a tarpon. It's a great big herring. It's a game fish down in Florida and I'm not condoning it. I'm just asking questions. And the story here isn't a 20 year old and a few of his teenage buddies that they killed a fish and brought it home and ate it. Folks scream about getting kids off of computers. Yet when those same kids don't do exactly what you want them to do or how you would like them to do it from your own experience, what happens? We as adults get back on the keyboard ourselves to trash these same kids we criticize for always being at the keyboard. And we do it without stopping to ask questions. And I think everybody's most important question here is, is what? It's the question that I asked Jake myself. Why did I kill it? So there's, there, there's a couple different reasons why I killed it. And you know, A, I wanted everyone to believe me. That's, I mean, was that totally right thing to do to kill the fish just because I wanted people to believe me? No, but also that's a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. How often, I mean, the last time one was rec recordedly caught here was in 82. You know, that's the last one on record. How, I, for me, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I will never see one of those, never shoot one of those, let alone catch one of those in my lifetime from what I, from what I can tell. Barnegat yeah, Light. in Barnegat Light, New Jersey. Not not like we're in Cape May, South Jersey. Uh, we're, we're in Central Jersey, we're in Barnegat Light, you know? I mean, and it wasn't even like the water was that warm. It was only 70 degrees. It's just like, you know, people give me hay for deer hunting, but I deer hunt because I like to eat deer meat, you know? And I, I hunt conservatively. I don't go out there and just kill whatever moves. Um, and also, you can, another comparison you give it to is like marlin fishing. You know, everywhere else out in the world, people eat and kill marlin. On the East Coast here, it's frowned upon. Why? I'm not sure. Personally, I love eating marlin. I think marlin are delicious. And if I did catch one, probably harvest it. It's just, I, I don't know, that's just kind of how I roll. That's how I think of it. Full disclosure here, I've known the Klein family for many, many, many years. And I know that Jake learned to spearfish when he, he was in Hawaii with his family. They just moved back to the LBI area about four or five years ago. But in talking to Jake and asking a couple of questions, what I learned is that there wasn't just this one tarpon along the jetty at Barnegat Light. There were 12, well, 11 now. Which brings to mind the obvious question that rod and reel fishermen in the state of New Jersey and especially in the Barnegat Light area should have for themselves. To be honest with you, the second day that I went out, the day that I shot the fish, those fish were definitely in feeding mode. They were cruising back and forth on the ledge of the inlet. They were looking for food. I think if someone who is an experienced tarpon fisherman or has been around and knows how to target these fish, I think they could go out there and successfully catch them. I really do. There was the, the, the numbers were there. The fish were in a feeding mode, from what I can tell, and I, I think there's a good chance someone could go out there and catch one.